that give me the and welcome to expedition church of the triad glad to have you tonight and i uh, ho hope you are blessed and ministered to we trust that the word of god will bring understanding and revelation in your life and um, bless you abundantly and i'm trying to get this thing to turn off and uh, it's not wanting to co there we go it's now cooperated hallelujah uh, share now all right and we're out there live and in person hallelujah and if some of you are how if you're far enough away right now this is as close to in person as you're going to get unless you travel to <laughs> down to the greensboro area hallelujah expedition church of the triad part of the greater greensboro uh, uh greensboro piedmont triad metroplex hallelujah doesn't that sound fancy yeah it just means a lot of people live in one area hallelujah glory to god uh, including Wins greensboro winston salem high point Hallelujah, and this this regional metroplex, and of course you get in Burlington, and you know those things. Uh, glory to God. So we're glad to have you, and uh, trust that you were uh, enjoyed your meal. I enjoyed it. Uh, next one will be in April. Hallelujah. So we're doing every other month, and so the next next one of these will be in April. And so please, you know, we'll give you a date, and then when we do, put it on your calendar, and do do your best to be here because we got here at six, and it was. Mm-hmm. Had a good time. And then Rita just brought this honey bun cake. <laughs> just like, you know, let's, let's top this off right. <laughs> Hallelujah. All righty. A um, couple of announcements as we kind of getting settled in. Um, let's wait and see if anybody else is going to slide in uh, this out there in the hallways or whatever. Uh, we, knew, we do know that Turkey... Um, was hit with a very, very bad earthquake. Uh, a seven point something, seven, like seven point eight, was the initial shock, and um, the town of An the city of Antioch, the biblical city of Antioch, um, they said it's about ninety percent leveled. Um, people on the ground there that we have contact with um, says so about ninety percent leveled, and um, so it's it's in bad shape there. Their meeting place and their uh, business are unusable at this point. And so uh, there is money being raised to assist them and assist them to assist others. Okay. And so their, their goal was $100,000, but yesterday they raised 70. So they bumped it up to 150. Hallelujah. Because there's a lot to do. They have to get reestablished and, and, and get, you know, what they can do what they're, they're doing and then help feed and clothe and help take care of people also so if you want to give to that you can give to the church and we will we will forward it to them if you want to go directly you can go um to the thing that jesse posted on the thing the church about turkey you could go if you just want to be like i want to do it directly to them that's fine we don't get offended by that if you come in and say i want to send it straight to them i don't care if you want it to go through us i don't care that's that's however you want to do it we're just going to be a facilitator to get the money to them if you give it to us okay hallelujah so you, you, know, you do what you would like to do on that. Hallelujah. But there is a, um, a post on the church website about Turkey and about how to give to them directly, uh, to those, those people on, on, on the ground and doing the work. And um, so praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, the, um, the people on the ground there, because we are live on the world, we're just saying people on the ground. Okay, hallelujah. Um, our, um, their home was, is uninhabitable. Their place of meeting is uninhabitable. And their business is, un is unusable. They they're went today to clean them out, to get all their possessions out of them, because they're going to have to find another place and, and reset up camp. Okay. And they've had aftershocks. One of the, one of the aftershocks was 7.5. Aftershock. Yeah, they've had a hundred, uh, close to 200 aftershocks, so this was a major, this was a major event, a seismic event. Um, it moved into Syria. Um, like I said, the city of Antioch, you know, with, you know, and there were certain uh, uh, disciples in Antioch. Okay, that's where they were, that's where Paul was sent out uh, from the church in Antioch. Hallelujah. So, uh, if you're interested in giving to that. Give to the church or give directly. It's, it's up to you. Uh, but if you do give and want to give to the church, do make sure you put on there turkey on it. Just like I got it on the memory line, put turkey. We would know what that means. 
and that money will go directly um, out of here into the into the um, to the ministry. Okay, all righty. Welcome. Uh, some of you, if you didn't make it, we're sorry you didn't make it in time to eat. But uh, I'm not going to tell you how good it was. I'm not going to even hint to you how good it was. I won't even try to make you feel bad about you missed how good it was. But let me ask Jerry, how good was it? Okay, excellent. Hey, it's a it's a band of band. Hey, it's a, it's a spicy bear. Mm. Okay, praise the Lord. All right, we've been ministering over the past uh, weeks. On, on, conf on the Word, confessing. Last week we were talking about keeping the Word. What were the four things about the Word that we do to keep it? Did y'all take notes? Because y'all should be able to go back to your notes and tell me what they were. Hear it. Receive it. Love it. And obey it. Now remember when we got to talking about loving it, you know, uh, we being Word people, Love the scriptures on prosperity and on what we can have and talk about bye-bye chickens and, you know, all the, you know, the prosperity. And, and again, I'm not knocking prosperity. Uh, and I'm not against prosperity. I am against um, misleading people in a manner in which they, um, it hurts them spiritually instead of helps them. Okay, you know, if you send to this ministry, he's got a thousand fold anointing. You're going to get a thousand fold return because uh, he, he's operating tonight under a thousand fold ministry. Uh, one of the people who preached prosperity back in that era would, would, would said that publicly. Would say, I've got a thousand. There, there's a thousand fold anointing on me tonight. Given this offering. I, and I have yet to hear one get up and say, there's a thousand fold anointing on me tonight. Give to your local church and watch God bless you. Had to give into that anointing. Uh, so, I, you know, we, we talked about that. Uh, we talked about that in comparison to character, okay, integrity, scriptures that deal with those things. People don't embrace and love those that much. Okay, they don't go, whoo, going to a humility seminar this week. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you here? I'm going to an integrity seminar. Oh, man, I can't wait to get in there and get a hold of that truth. <coughs> we, don't really, we hardly see books about that kind of stuff. And if we do, they don't sell. Okay? Now, what book sells? Money coming. Well, it's a, it's a great message. But take it and, and not have it balanced with the other things will cause problems in the end. Okay? So don't don't forget that that's important, and uh, we, you know so they that you know to keep the word means that we hear it, receive it, love it, and obey it. Jesus said, you know, not Jesus. Um, James said, "Be doers of the word." Jesus, but through the Holy Ghost, told James, "Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves." So you got to be a doer of the word. Say, "I'm a doer of the word." All right. So now we're going to move. For, you know, and, and tie all this, we're, we're, we're trying to, you know, take and make things applicable. So now we're talking about decisions tonight. Okay? Let's look, um, the, uh, the choices we make, our decisions, will bring blessing or cursing. Now, I'm not under the curse. I'm going to sing that little charismatic tune. I'm not under the curse. I'm not under the curse. Since Jesus has set me free, for sickness I've health and for poverty wealth. Since Jesus, he ransomed me. Great song. I love it. Sang it all the time. We'll still sing it. Okay? But what we walk in is a choice. You can choose prosperity. You can choose poverty. You can choose sickness. You can choose health. Amen. Now, we now listen, I'm tying into what we've already said before. I'm not just coming up here out of the blue going, it's all your choice. Remember, we talked about that we had to take the Word of God. We had to keep our confession. We had to feed on the Word to get the right confession, get our right information from the right place. That's not, we're not unconnected from that. Okay? That is central and fundamental to what I'm saying now. All right? You just can't come in and go, well, it's all your choice. Well, no, wait a second now. See? There's nothing to 
establish that on. You're trying to put, you know, uh, the wood framing on dirt. But see, we took time to lay a foundation. Okay? And that foundation is the Word of God. Feeding on the Word. Meditating in the Word. Hearing the Word. Receiving the Word. Loving the Word. Obeying the Word. Having the right confession. Getting our information from the right place. And as we do that, then we can begin to make decisions. And we can, as, as God says here in Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 30, he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. And listen to what God says. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Now, <laughs> God's like, in case you can't figure it out, therefore choose life. Okay? That thou both thou and thy seed may live. <clears throat> that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell. Um, just absolutely lost. Where, in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Hallelujah. And so God says here, there is set before you. He set it before you. you got a choice. You choose... You make a choice. Now, based on the foundation that you already know, I'm to feed on the Word. I'm to get God's perspective on this. I'm to line up with God, but without faith, it's impossible to please Him or come into agreement with Him. Well, where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. <clears throat> Amen. But if you choose not to walk in that, then you've made a choice to walk in defeat. Okay? It is a de facto result. Wow, that went over big. Okay? Uh, you know, if it's, it's like paddling upstream. Now, how many know paddling upstream is not easy? If you're going to paddle upstream, you're going to have to keep working. You're going to have to keep paddling. You're going to have to keep going, right? What happens if you stop? You will have a de facto change of direction because the current will start taking you. Well, see, this world, amen, we're not to walk according to the course of this world. That's the stream going opposite of which way we want to go. Okay? So the things of this world, of this fallen world, are what we're going to have to say this way, the, the de facto result of not doing the word or choosing the word and so by not you have choose to walk in that you made the choice your choice is was was made in not doing the word not hearing receiving loving and obeying okay yeah but that's so hard here's the thing the more you do it and the longer you live there the more uh, adept you come at living that way, it's like putting an outboard motor on your boat. And going against the current ain't no big deal. Okay? When you start out, it's like paddling. But it's the more you become and the stronger you get and the more you understand, it becomes easier and easier. All right? I've, um, I've gone whitewater rafting numerous times. And I hadn't been, you know, since I got older, but I used to go all the time up on the Nola Chucky. Um, uh, outside of Spruce Pine, North Carolina. And um, <laughs> we went one day. Whew. Actually, we went one time. They wouldn't even let us get on it. We had to go up on the upper toe and, and, and raft it because the Nola Chucky was so dangerous. They wouldn't let commercial outfitters on it. The, uh, the park service shut down. You can't get on that. Now, individuals could do You can't stop them. But the commercial guys weren't allowed on it. And we went gone. We, were, we had started up the uh, mountain to the other river. 15 minutes, and here come the rescue squad. I was going down to get somebody who had already tried to get on that. It was nasty. That river, that river, when the water's high, now you get it under, they call it, you have a measure called four. You get it under four, boy, some good rapids. I mean, there are some good rapids. I mean, there's 42 rapids over a 10 mile stretch. Looking up in a gorge of cliffs 2,800 feet up right beside you, going down through that gorge, 42 rapids, three fours and fives, and when it's water's up, four fives and sixes. Okay, and um, there's one that had like 15 rapids that you went up like this, and they were up 10 feet that day. You hit, you just hit them right in a row. Boy, that was fun. 
Okay? Now, I'm telling you, you don't just get on that river and not go somewhere. It's taking you somewhere. And this world will take you with it if you don't resist it. And the way we resist, submit yourself, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Now, I love that. He will flee from you as in terror is what the literal Greek says. Amen? And so how do we resist the devil? We do the word. You don't have to get up there and go, devil, I resist you. Do the word. That, by de facto, resist him. Amen? Doing the word puts a hurting on him. Amen? Now, I know there's times to take authority, that kind of stuff, and we'll get in that when we teach on authority. But, you know, sometimes we spend more time screaming at the devil and hollering at the devil instead of just doing what the word says. Oh, I'm just going, I'm going to say it. Sometimes we'd rather just take a f like five minutes and scream at the devil and holler at the devil and tell him to stop in Jesus' name than to take the time to get into the Word, to hear what the Word has to say, and put that into operation in our life, because that's more of a process that takes longer to, to implement than it is to copy somebody screaming at the devil for five minutes. Okay. <clears throat> I think I heard somebody on TV say amen louder than y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, might even get an amen coming across the screen. All right. So God says <coughs> that he set before us life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Joshua 24, verse, verse 15 says this, going through 22. And if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served when they were on the other side of the flood, or the God of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. Now, this is Joshua talking now. <clears throat> but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, of which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us all in the way wherein we went and among all the people through uh, whom we passed, and the Lord drave out before us. Yeah, that's the word drave. That's old King Jimmy. Even the Amorites, which dwell in the land, therefore we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said to the, to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He's a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins if you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, and he will turn and do you her heart and consume you, that he, uh, and that he hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, You are witnesses against yourselves, that ye have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. <coughs> now this is, a, this is one of those things where Joshua goes, yeah, you, you know, you're going to walk with God, you're going to serve God. Jerry goes, yeah, I'm going to do it. I don't believe you can do it. Okay? I remember um, <laughs> Dr. Osborne, <coughs> T.L. Osborne, we were sitting up at a missions conference with him one time. And uh, Brother Osborne, we, you know, we got all these people here at this minister's conference, and he's, he's been on the mission field for so long, people thought he was dead. Honestly thought he would have been dead, that his magazine was just producing pictures and stuff to keep money coming in to support the things they were doing. Thought he was dead. He came back to America. About 1981, he'd been on the mission field for decades. And um, they, 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 they said, Brother Oswald, I thought, we thought you were dead. Oh. And uh, he said, I'm not dead. <laughs> Glory to God. You had to see him minister. He was, he was awesome. And uh, so he's sitting up there at this panel. And, you know, somebody's talking about ministry and stuff and, you know, missions. And he goes, you want to do ministry? You can't do it. You're greenhorns. You know, you can't eat the food. You can't drink the water. And he just goes on and on and on. What he's trying to do is to get people to get out of the romance of ministry and understand that obedience to God is going to take obedience to God and hearing God and walking with God. And it's a decision, a life-altering decision to obey God. It's not we're just going, oh, we're going to take off and go over there, print up our little business cards, and we're going to all get over there, and it's going to be, uh, you know, 
uh, sugar and honey all the time. You can't drink the water. You can't eat the food. Call us greenhorns. <laughs> well, he'd been about everywhere you could be. He was doing mass crusades before you, Reinhardt Monkey was born. Okay? Uh, <coughs> he was doing open-air mass crusades in Mexico when it was illegal with 50,000, 60,000 people in the outdoor meetings. Okay? His name is still revered in places like India where he came and held crusades. And people still remember their grandparents talking about T.L. Osborne coming. All right? And uh, this is what Joshua's doing to him right here. You're greenhorns. You can't obey God. I've seen you in action. Okay? You know, we spent 40 years because of that bunch. Your mom and dad were not all that. Really? They were wimpy. They were out worshiping altars and calves and all this kind of stuff. They just happened to make the right decision before the, open, uh, the earth opened up. And you bunch, you're going to do the same thing. You were out in the wilderness complaining over the manna. You were out in the wilderness complaining over the quail. And now here you are, and you're, you know, you're complaining about this, complaining about that. Now I'm, I'm reading something, but this is what's really going on. You can't do it. They said, we will serve God. Okay? And here's what you've got to make, serving God. See, we try so hard to make it, and I, don't take me wrong when I say this, so easy to serve Jesus when it is a commitment. It is not simply getting born again. It is a commitment to serve him. Amen. You have to, you have to sell out. You're going to sell out to him. A hundred percent. Calling him Lord means it's not a nickname for Jesus. It is the recognition of his place of authority in your life. You are submitting to him. And so he's given you the option, and here he gave, they gave him, I gave him the option, and the word Lord is used here, small caps, meaning it was Jehovah, Yahweh Jehovah. Okay. I, I feel like I, I, I just get tired of having to explain that every time. Y'all understand when I say Jehovah or Yahweh, y'all know what I'm talking about. The te tetragram or whatever that thing is. Huh? The tetragrammaton. The tetragrammaton. I want that posted on the back wall somewhere, just written on the back wall, and leave it so I'll always know what it is. You know, Yahweh, tetragrammaton for Jehovah, for Lord. All right. One bit sweet day. Hallelujah. You know, I'll get it right, oh glory, I'll get it right. The tetragrammaton, I'll get it right. Hallelujah. Hopefully it's not when I'm flying away. All right. So we have a choice to make. Now, we know from what we've been teaching since the first of the year that we are to feed on the Word of God. We're to live according to the Word of God. It is what renews our mind. Okay? Be, not, uh, trans, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Well, what's God's will? Well, obedience is one of them. God does want you to hear his word. God wants you to receive his word. God wants you to love his word, but he wants you to obey his word. Amen. Now, we got a lot of people running around wanting a word. You know, they want to go to a prophecy meeting and get a word, but they won't obey the word. They want a special word. But they don't want to obey the word. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I've been in the prayer chair. Man, I say, listen, you got me. I, I was with the loonies. I mean, I love Jesus, but I was with the loonies. Okay? There is a reason they started calling people like us crazy medics. Because we were crazy. You know? We were so, but see, we were young and dumb spiritually. We wanted the things of God. We wanted to be used of God. We wanted to be in the things of the Spirit. And now the, what the devil tried to do is try to push you away from it because of the stupidity and the craziness. But I've been in the prayer chair. And everybody's got to line up and give you a word. I'll never forget. We had been, Jamie and I hadn't been saved all that long. And we were going to the cottage prayer meeting. 
Because it was more spiritual than our church. They really flowed in the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Amen. You know. And they just, they were praying for the pastor because he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't Pentecostal enough. Okay. We had, we got a very good, they had the prayer chair you had to put in the middle of the room. And everybody had to get in the chair once that, you know. And everybody would gather around them. And then everybody would start prophesying and one by one. Yea, the Lord says. And yea, the Lord says. And the Lord says. And the Lord says. And they were always good. <laughs> there was never, I'm going to tell you what. I remember the first time I heard, heard somebody in the spirit say something that won't good. It was my ordination service with Brother Hagen. Now, um, this was 1990, and a lot of us, you know, had, had been out there. Y'all just don't mind if I go where I'm going, do you? Good. Y'all going to do it anyway. Okay. Um, I, had, um, I had been ordained with a, a church that ordained when I got out of Raymond. Then I got ordained with Faith Christian Fellowship, Buddy Harrison, Brother Hagen's son-in-law. But then the Lord said, go back to your roots. And so I, I was actually ordained in 1989 with Rama, Canada Taking Ministries. But it took another year or so to get to Tulsa for the hand laying on service. So I had my papers and so forth, and um, and I and I and I kept Faith Christian Fellowship, Buddy Harrison, and Raymond together for about two or three years, and then I just couldn't be faithful to both organizations. The only reason I left FCF because I love Brother Buddy. He he was a tremendous influence in my life, and a wonderful man of God. And I could cry about that, talking about him. But anyway, because he, he, he invested a lot. Okay. But I remembered our ordination service. You know, we had a bunch of people who had the same thing kind of happen. They had gone out with different organizations because we graduated. We don't ordain here at Kenneth Hagin Ministries. Go out, get connected to somebody, work with them. We'll see you back at Alumni Week. It's kind of like, go out there and do something. Come out and visit. That's kind of how it was. Well, then God met that matured into Raymond Bible Church and then you know, an ordaining arm for them. It went from a Rama Alumni Association to Rama Ministerial Association International, and that started about 1987, 80, 87 or so. And by 1989, I was ordained with them. Okay? And uh, that happened to a lot of people who've been connected to other things, but God was calling us home, called us back home. Uh, and so we did. So we had a bunch of people in that initial ordaining service. But everybody in the building was there to get ordained, had hand on them, had have hands laid on them. Well, you know, well, Janie and I are pretty far back down the line. You know, by the time we get in line, you know, they say all, all of our ministers are, you know, get, we all get in line. You know, we're probably about 100 couples down the line. That's fine, you know. And uh, so <clears throat> Brother Hagen gets up and he goes over to the first person and lays, starts laying hands on him and says, now I lay my hands upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, to set you apart to the ministry, so forth. So he's going along and he says, all of a sudden, now you're being hard-headed. You don't listen to your wife. <laughs> and, 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 of course, I think they just flopped to get out of it. Boom! <laughs> Got to the next one. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you to separate you to the ministry. Da -da 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 -da. You've been hard-headed. And about the first six to eight couples, and one of them I knew very well, one, the wife I went to Raymond with, where they were good friends of ours, and Janie and I, and I still are friends. You know, we, uh, we went and visited um, uh, her and her husband out in Palm Springs, California, and um, a number of years ago, got to see them. And, uh, <coughs> and they were one of them that got that one, too. Even hard-headed, you had to listen to your wife, da 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 da, da. And then, then he stepped there, and as Brother Hagen would often do, he would get to ministering, and, and then he would step over into the spirit to where he, was, he wasn't speaking English anymore. He was just praying in tongues as he laid hands on people. And uh, so he got down there around, I, don't, I forgot how many people down, not too many, you know, under 10 of no glorious pie in the sky words. Okay? And he got over the tongues, and I went, glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so by the time I got out there, there were no more of them negative things. It was just all, I'm thinking, Lord, I'm, I'm not going to listen. I'm going to listen to my wife. I'm going to listen to my wife. You don't have to tell everybody. I mean, they got the cameras up there. Yeah, we know who you are. <laughs> See, 
spiritual things are not always hunkadory pie in the sky. If you're really walking in the spirit, remember the Old Testament? <laughs> See, I keep doing this, and that's okay, because I'm getting into a flow, an older flow, this fresher, a fresh manifestation of the older flow I used to work in, walk in. <clears throat> See, we always, always, so in our prayer chair, we never got bad words. And so what it happens, that becomes addictive. You want to go every week and get that next word that's basically the same one, all, you know, fluff and puff. Okay? That's really what it is. That's all you ever hear. And I remember. Now, I'm going to go back to the, the, the words like Brother Hagin, okay? Just stay with me. Your job is the banquet at Alumni Week, the word from Brother Hagin. That's your job. When I go, what was I talking about? If I look at you, you give me that. You tell me what I said. And me, Jamie and I have been going over this cottage prayer meeting about two months. Been saying, we're baby Christians. We don't know nothing. I mean, all I know is I love Jesus. And I love the Holy Ghost and praying in tongues like a maniac. I mean, <clears throat> I drive at stop signs with my convert Fiat 124 Sports Spider convertible with the top down. Rolling the wind up. They're rolling the wind up. <laughs> like, oh my God, get the gun out. <laughs> but we went one night. We held them on a Friday nights, I think we held them. Went. And I didn't get a word. Nothing. Not, you, you aggravate me, you ugly. Nothing. Man, I came out of there. Talk about devastated. I didn't get a word. Because I had gotten addicted on it, to it. I was having to go get that word every week. Okay? And, of course, Janie's going, I told you they're crazy. <laughs> Look, you grew up heathen. Leave me alone. Okay? You were heathematic. I didn't say that to her. I'd be, yeah, you would never know me if I said that to her. <laughs> <coughs> you wouldn't be here today. Hello. Um, <laughs> or I, I'd be shorter, one of the two. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I just, I was so devastated I didn't get that word. And that's when the Lord began to deal with me about you can't live on this. I never called you to live on personal prophecies and special words and that kind of thing. Okay? And, I, and, and that's when I, I made some Of course, that was before I went to Rhema. And, of course, they really helped. I mean, Rhema really helped, helped me. Because when I got there, I was, I was a fruitcake. I had two roommates who were the fruitiest of the fruits. Okay? Their picture is what the toucan was based on. Toucan, Fruit Loops. Yeah. Come on, God, I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> All right, and we, you know, we, remember I told you the, the showing up with Rayma or Bust, you know, the God Squad on that with shoe polish. At least we could have gotten a professional paint job. Shoe polish, God Squad. You know, Rayma, or, Rayma or Bust. You know, and um, then my family thought I was crazy. They called it Rima. Rima, where are you going that Rima for? Anyway, and so I was devastated because I was depending on that word. And so I, I was, I had been trained in that short period of time that the only other thing you ever get in prophecy or a word was glorious. But the word of God declares that the word, the scriptures are good for reproof, rebuke, instruction and in righteousness and doctrine. So 50% is corrective. 50% is uh, productive. Well, correction is productive, but you understand what I'm saying. You know? Okay? It's good for doctrine, reproof, rebuke, and instruction in righteousness. 
You're going to have to have reproof and rebuke sometimes from the Word of God to be able to receive the instruction in righteousness. And like those ministers, I mean, they're coming along there, and you, you, they think, man, we get, we get in on the first part of this anointing with Brother Hagin. Yeah, they sure did. And it's forever. I have the video. It's forever ingrained in VHS. Hallelujah. You know, you know, sitting there, recorded for the generations to come. You didn't listen to your wife. I got tongues and got down on the ground quick. Just make sure he didn't have time to come up with something else. Stop. Whoa. I, hey. Yeah, you're one of them too or something, you know. Now. So about 1981 to, now that, that, was, that, was, that was 89, that was 90. But in about 80, back in 1982, Jamie and I went to Alumni Week. They didn't have Winter Bible Seminar, but then they had Alumni Week. Um, and we were at the Coliseum. We'd go to the Coliseum because so many people came home back then. It was a big event. Alumni Week was a big event. And so they would use the, the uh, Tulsa Assembly Center, and we had the banquet down on the floor. There were so many people there. And then when you got done, you could, if you want to, you could go sit up in the, the stadium seats, which was more comfortable, especially if your back was to the platform where Brother Hagan was going to speak and, and share with us. And so he's up there one night, that night and, um, of the banquet, and he gets up there, and he's just talking. And then he says, well, let's just pray. And he starts to pray, and then he says, there, another year shall come and go, and there'll be those here tonight who'll be absent. Not... They won't be here in this building, but they'll be absent from the earth. He says, now, if you, and you know who you are, and he names up, he said, two of you are living in adultery right now with your secretary. One of you, and he named off what he was doing. He says, now, if you'll come and see me, I can get it straight, and that won't happen. One did, the other two died. That'll freak you out. You'll think, what? We're at Rhema. We're at Alumni Week. Hey, another year shall come and go, and there's those that among you won't be with us. They'll be absent from the earth. You're going, what did I do? <laughs> Hello? Then he, then he clarifies it, tells what they're doing. Hello? <clears throat> we come back the next year. Same thing. You'd think people would have learned from the previous year. You would. People can be stupid. They can be hard-headed. We can share things about being obedient to the Word and that you got to make the right choice. I'm, looking, I'm just kind of halfway segueing back into this. And people sit there and think, well, it's not me. Um, I remember the year before I got to Rhema. No, 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 no. That was the year I was there. Uh, near the end of the year. Um, Brother Higgins, we're in, we're in the big meeting. Now, we had, uh, there was certain days we, the, the whole school came together. And we had first and second year students. And so most of the time we were divided, but there was, there was certain days that all of us were there together. And Brother Higgins stepped down the thing, and he looks at it and he goes, and he points right back at this guy at the back of Rooker Memorial. It, back then it was Raymond Church Auditorium, but back then it, it, was now, it was now Rooker Memorial Auditorium. He points back at this guy sitting on the end of the road. He said, I see death on you. He said, there's a cloud hanging over you right now. It's death. He said, you come see me, and I can tell you what to do to avoid that. And all of his friends after the thing said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? He said, I ain't going to do a thing about it. He died. I see death on you. See, you got over to the Spirit and saw death. Let's see. You like it when they look over and say, I see you as the world evangelist. I see you taking nations for God. I see you as the biggest television ministry in the history of humanity. We love that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to hear, I see death on you. But here's the thing. See, God doesn't do things without a purpose. He was giving him the opportunity to make the change. You come see me, I'll tell you what to do to avoid that. And he said, I'm not going to do a thing about it. And he died. 
Now, what do you call that? Stupid. The Lord came. And then people go, well, I thought y'all believed in healing. I thought y'all believed that God was going to, you know, God wasn't going to do this and God wasn't going to do that. God, God gave him the opportunity not to go there. God arrest, had, a, had brother stop in a service and arrest him to point out and say, I know what to do just so you don't die. And the guy wouldn't take it. Kind of like the guy who's, um, you know, as floods coming and rise up to his house and uh, he gets in a boat. No, he get, he, so he climbs up the second floor. And the waters keep rising and start coming in the second floor. So he climbs out the window and climbs up on the roof. While he's up on the roof, you know, um, <clears throat> two boats come by. He said, no, I'm, the Lord's going to deliver me. I'm waiting for you know, somebody to come, you know, going to get rescued. No, nope, God's going to deliver me. You know, so the boat comes by. No, nope, another one comes by and it's all the way up to them. It's up on the pinnacle almost. No, nope, God's going to God's going to deliver me from this. Helicopter comes by and drops down the road. He says, no, God's going to deliver me from this. Well, the waters rise up some more, and he drowns. And he gets to heaven and says, Lord, why didn't you rescue me? I, he said, I sent two boats and a helicopter. <laughs> Amen. And that's the way we are with our God sometimes. Because we don't do what the Word says. We, we won't receive the instruction of the Word so that we can rightly interpret a word from God and stop looking for that special special thing that we don't have to put any effort into doing the word. Amen. We miss it with God too often. Okay. So the, the choice before is life and death, blessing or cursing. And he says, choose life, choose life. Okay. And uh, my Bible's open somewhere. I don't even think it's the right place. I just picked it up. Okay. And so Joshua Okay, we are we are witnesses. We witness the fact that we've made a decision to serve God, to do what God said. Does that mean you will never, ever miss it? No. Here's the big key. On dealing with missing it. God's merciful. And when you miss it. If you will acknowledge that, now I don't care what you call it, repent, acknowledge, confess, whatever, because now everybody's into, oh, we don't need to repent anymore. We're pre-forgiven. Go ahead, stupid, with that one. See how it works out for you. Okay? You just, people jump on certain things and make something out of it that it's not. All right? God's merciful. And God can restore. God's a restorer. Even in your failures. We said this before. God will restore you in the midst of your failures. Israel failed over and over and sometimes miserably. He's still calling my people. And I'll heal your backsliding. I mean, I'm, I mean, God, you're thinking, wow. And even one time he really got ticked off and was going to wipe them out. Moses ran out there. Will not the God of heaven do right? And so God withheld and drew back his anger. And then he turns right around and he's like, what did you do and give me this bunch? Moses didn't have the patience to God. <laughs> did y'all remember reading that? How, how, how that happened? You know, one minute he's arguing for him and will not the God of heaven do right? Next thing you know, uh, what in the world did I do for you to give me this crowd? <laughs> you know, because they, they were bozos sometimes. But God's bigger than your failures. So as we are endeavoring to make the right choices, life, there's going to be times you make the wrong one. That's not a negative confession. I don't make wrong choices. A positive confession is a confession based on what the Word promises you and what the Word says. Okay? You can say, I choose to follow after God. I choose to obey his word and to do his word. I choose to endeavor to hear his voice and to follow after him. Okay? But I can guarantee you, and it's not being negative, there's going to be times you miss it. Okay? And I'm not saying that, that you're going to have to sin a little every day. I'm not going to say you're going to miss it all the time. But you, there's going to be times you miss it. And you got to know how to deal with that, especially in our circles. 
okay? You know, um, you've got to know when that you miss it, what to do. And getting hard-headed and hard-nosed about it is not the answer. You have to choose to get it right, make the adjustment, and get back where you belong. Okay? <clears throat> now, remember, we're not perfect. We're not perfected. And even though the King James uses the word that, you know, that we're, you know, that the body supplies till we become a perfect man, it ain't talking about perfection. It's not talking about flawlessness. It is actually a word that, that conveys the meaning of maturity. We grow up. And grown-ups know how to acknowledge when they've made a mistake and to fix it. Or to go to the one that knows how to fix it. Okay? So if you blow it. And we've blown it before. I blew it. I mean, I blew it. I blew it in ministry. One of the biggest mistakes I ever made in the church was financial. Because we we ran dead up trying to keep the doors open. And boy, it put us in a hole. It put us in a huge hole. Now God got us out because we 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 shut that down and repented and said, I, I blew it. Lord, I blew it. I, I was trying, I was trying to keep this thing going. I was trying to do this, but it messed, I mean, it was a mess. I mean, you're talking about a mess. Well, you're, when you're like $85,000 of unsecured debt on the hole and money's not coming in, you're in a mess. Which is why we ended up, we, we, we went to work, you know. <laughs> you had to do what you had to do. We, had to, we went to work. Why? Because I wasn't going to let my mistake shut the ministry down. Okay, and that took some years to get it straight and get out of it. <laughs> now we're more in the bank than we were in debt. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In reserve. Glory to God. Well, I'll ne I will I'll never plan on being in that kind of situation again. I always go, don't, don't want to be in a situation. We, we got the money, I mean, to buy. We couldn't have paid for your dinner tonight. We you know the church bought and paid for the, the food tonight. And it cooked, you know, we cooked it and we did, you know, but we paid for it. The church did. There was a time we couldn't have done it. We'd have had to charge you double for it just to get, you know, and get a little extra money to pay some stuff off. Now, if, if y'all think it was worth an extra $20 for your dinner tonight, you know, that's a joke. <laughs> we don't, we don't need for you to pay for it. It's, it's, it's already done. And I'm taking leftovers home. You know what I'm having for lunch tomorrow? Was there any corn chowder left? Just a little bit. <laughs> Did y'all get into it after y'all got here? Oh. Well. I'm having vegetable beef tomorrow. All righty. So uh, these decisions that we have to make come out of being a doer of the word. All this we can talk about, confessing, feeding, living in the Word. Our, now, we're going to get into it next week. We're going, um, I'm not going to go long tonight and carry this out because as, once I start, I want to roll, okay? Okay? Um, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a, a, um, a teaser. All right? Numerous Bible characters made the wrong decision. And we're going to talk about that. Amen? Let me even take it a little bit further. Numerous Bible characters who made the wrong decisions ended up in Hebrews chapter 11 and the heroes of faith. <laughs> that's, just, that's just like God. To take some of the biggest bozos and fix it all and put them in the hall of fame of faith and go, by faith, you know, Samson, you know, you mean Samson? Mr. Can't Control His Flesh? All hooked up on the harlot? Hello? Told the secret God told not to tell? Because he was drunk? Yeah, Hall of Fame of Faith. Isn't that great? Okay, why? Because he made a, a corrective decision. All right? So we'll get into that next week, praise the Lord. Let's, let's go ahead and receive tonight's offering. We're going to stop right here. And um, praise the Lord. I'm, not, I'm saddened, sort of. I'm glad everybody got to get some of that. And get, you know, whoever ate got to enjoy and partake and be blessed. 
because that chowder, we should have doubled that recipe. We had no idea it was going to go over so big. Because we always make a big thing of vegetable beef, and everybody just eats it up. But he ate that chicken corn chowder, and it, just, and it kept going down and down and down and down. That's all right. I can eat the vegetable beef. Yeah. Throw some, throw some cheese in there. Glory to God. You don't put cheese in yours? Oh, I'll take a slice of ch sharp cheddar and put on top of it and let it melt down. And when I pick the spoon up, the, the, the cheese comes out with it. <laughs> Runs all down your face and you're pulling up the strings back into your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, this is for the general tithe, not for the church. If you want to give electronically, um, you're welcome to, if you're watching online, you're welcome to give at your cash app at dollar sign expedition tri triad. That's your cash tag. Expedition Triad, so it's dollar sign Expedition Triad for Cash App. PayPal is give at expeditiontriad.org. Hallelujah. Uh, if you are wanting to support the relief fund for Turkey, we are connected to a ministry that is um, over a ministry in the region that will be able to get money to them. They've already raised $79,000 in two days. And uh, actually, yesterday it started out at 9,000 in the morning with 79,000 by the afternoon. So it, it really shot up. And so their goal is 150. I think it's going to go up from there because it's, it's, it's the devastation is going to take more. Hallelujah. And so you, if you want to get to that, please memo it as turkey. If you memo it as turkey, it will all, we, we are not going to take anything out. It's all going to go to them. Okay. We, we, I don't believe in that. I, these people do stuff and call it, well, we have administrative costs. <laughs> I want people's money to go where they wanted it to go. And if they want to give that money to Turkey, I want it to go to Turkey and not me pat, you know, slip off a few percent on the top because we got administrative. What administrative cost? That person, if you got a person in your church working and handling finances, they're there whether you give that money or not. So we're not, you know, forget that mess. Are you here? Are y'all going home? If you want, so if you're giving to that, Online, if you're giving to that, it will go directly to the to the um, overseeing ministry of all of this, and they are they're going to make sure that their their church on the ground, their missionaries on the ground, uh, and so forth are covered and taken care of, and have finances to uh, do things to help uh, uh, reach out and minister to those hurting there, feed them, get water for them, fuel for them, okay, uh, get, providing uh, real time. Um, ministry and supplies to those in need. Okay? Hallelujah. All righty. Glory to God. Let's give. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the time, the offering, the special offerings. We thank you that uh, we're able to reach out and minister your life supernaturally and abundantly. Father, we thank you that as we do this, your hand of mercy is upon people. And Father, those that are hurting and those that we can send finances to to help, I thank you, Father God, that, um, that they are sustained supernaturally by your power and by your spirit and that, that you equip them to use this as an open door of ministry to show the love of the one true and living God who gave Jesus Christ as the Redeemer and Savior of the world. Lord, we pray that effectual doors of ministry be opened and opportunities to share your love and your compassion with hurting people in Jesus' name. Bless them as they do that. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go ahead, Brother Joe. In-house offering. Those of you, praise God. Uh, give electronically. Thank you for sending that. And uh, everybody, don't forget Sunday morning. We'll be right back here uh, live and in person. If you're watching us on the Internet, we invite you to join us at Expedition Church of the Triad. We are located at, at 6302 Walter Wright Road uh, in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. Now, Pleasant Garden is 4.3 miles from the exit 124 off of Interstate 85, the Elm Eugene exit off of Interstate uh, 85, exit 124, where that's where we're located. We invite you to come and be with us, and uh, you can go to our, web, our website, expeditionstriad.org. Um, okay, that's the website. You can go to our web Facebook page, which is Expedition Church. Hallelujah. I don't know if it says other triad or not, but it's Expedition Church. It'll have the compass, okay? Um, 
and you can you can get directions there. Praise the Lord. We'd love to have you with us. God bless you. And uh, remember these words from First John chapter five and verse four: that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. Please join us again here at Expedition Church, where we're living the life a uh, life of victory forged by faith. Good night. God bless.